I have to put on my hoodies. Someone told me that uh, I look like the fat version of uh, Alan Walker. And I'm a piece of this. Right. So, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, so, what comes to your mind when you first, first hear the word hackers? So, everyone be honest, what comes to your mind? Would you imagine someone who is middle aged, slightly overweight, speaking in uh, TED Talk uh, events? Probably not. Right? So, the media has given us a very stagnant image about hackers. So today, I what I'd like to do is to give everyone a new paradigm shift of the word hackers, of hacking, and cyber attacks. So I would like to share with you some real stories as well so that it gives you a different perspective of how we look at cyber attacks today. So let's look at, think of hackers. What you would normally think about hackers? Are they someone who always work in a dark room? Someone, come on, what are the words they would, would give to a hacker? What do you think? Shady, malicious, bad intention, smart, intelligent, all right? Unfortunately, I don't have that part. But, uh, yo, yeah, so the typical image hacker would give to us is like someone who's always working alone in a dark room and very smart, intelligent. But in reality, hackers could be different, right? So take a look at these gentlemen here, these handsome gentlemen here. What do you see in them in common? Yeah. They're young. Very true. Uh, Chinese, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's not, that's not, not, not what I intended to share, but uh, yes. Yeah. But the wear glasses, right? Uh, predominantly male. Right? So these are real professional hackers. They hack banks. They hack, they hack government agencies, they hack different organizations as part of their daily jobs. And I'm fortunate to be able to work with some of the largest pool of ethical hackers in the country. So we hack banks, we hack various types of organizations every day, at a daily basis. Now in the process of hacking, we also get ourselves involved in computer crime investigation and digital forensic. And digital forensic is a very interesting, uh, very interesting industry because we get to learn from the bad guys. Whatever the bad guys are doing, whatever, whatever the bad guys are using as tools, we get to learn from doing digital forensics. So these individuals, they are real professional hackers. They hack banks as their daily jobs. Right? And one thing I would like to share with you is that all of these individuals here are graduated from this university. Taylor, University. So Another thing is that, is that, think of hacking. You know, when you describe something called hacking, what are the things that come to your mind? Hacking. Anything? When someone describes to you hacking, what, what are the things that come to your mind? Right. Data loss. You probably imagine something like a, a green screen with a lot of uh, you know, letters flowing up. And, uh, Matrix, you know, people typing from keyboard, you hear the clicking sounds of uh, keyboard typing. Uh, we have a lot of kind of imaginations when we look at the word hacking, right? So in, in, uh, in Hollywood, I think the media industry has done a lot of uh, good jobs in teaching us what is hacking all about, right? So I can guarantee you, hacking has nothing to do with that kind of situation. <laughs> but this is not hacking. But funny enough that if you do a Google or YouTube search, search for most realistic hacking, realistic hacking scene, you will find that. So what does a real hacking look like? You know, you know, um, what is the purpose of hacking? For professional hackers, the reason why we hack is because we want to, we want to play the role as a, as a malicious hacker. We want to pretend to be the bad guys using what, the, what techniques the bad guys are using and try to infiltrate into the client's network or computers so that we can find out what are the weaknesses and loophole the systems have, the network has. Right? So in a way, once we identify the loophole, our job as ethical hackers is to report back to the client and advise the client how to uh, do a patching, how to uh, fortify their system. That is our job. So in the, in the process of doing hacking, you will not see a lot of GUI, graphical user interface uh, gadgets. You will not see screens blinking with all the fancy letters. So this is hacking, right? Another thing I would like to share with everyone here is cyber attack. 
So we have probably seen a lot, you know, in the movies, uh, when an organization is under attack, you know, you will see all oh, the the, uh, the people working in the data centers or working in the security operation centers suddenly see a lot of alerts coming up. Uh, screens are flashing with red alerts, and then people are working crazily, typing on keyboards, and you see the, the attackers probably sending some whatever icons showing up on the screens. So these are what we have been conditioned to think about cyber attacks. Right, so this is exactly how Hollywood is teaching and telling everyone about cyber security hacking. Uh, a cyber attack, when cyber attack happens, defenders, defenders like us, we need to work in a very coordinated manner. We need to segregate duties, who is doing what, we need to have a very clear definition of the roles and responsibilities when we're coming, going through cyber attacks. It has nothing to do with what we see in the movies. And those are things we're making in movies. So in real life, cyber attacks are very real. And it doesn't just confine in movies. So, so in Malaysia, um, before I go to the next story, I would like to share with you a real story that happened back in 2021 May. This is a real story that's going to change the way how everyone here going to think about cyber attacks. But before I go into that story, let me ask everyone a question. Do you think Malaysia is a popular target for hackers? Anyone? Are we a popular target for hackers? We are? Uh, which country do you think likes to hack Malaysia the most? From where? Nigeria? Nigeria is scammed, not hacking. <laughs> India, right? Uh, in reality, right, honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea. Why? Because today hackers really change the way how they hack. Right? I came from the old school where 20 years ago, in order for you to hack, we need to invest a lot of resources into hacking activities. We need to be a programmer. We need to know how to write our tools. We need to know how network and systems work. We need to take things apart, apart and reverse engineer and learn about things before we are able to hack. That was 20 years ago. But today, if anyone will wish to be a hacker, they can just go to a website called YouTube.com, right? And <laughs> type in how to hack uh, Windows 10. You will see hundreds and hundreds of videos will tell you different ways to hack Windows 10. Right? So, is there any cybersecurity student here? Or cybersecurity practitioner here in, in the audience? Anyone? Yes? Nobody? No one? <laughs> okay, unfortunately. So, you see, Learning about hacking is not so difficult anymore because universities are also teaching students how to hack. Because if we, you know, if we know how to hack, we know how to defend. So that's the whole idea of why we need to learn about hacking. So let me share with you a real story that happened in Malaysia. Now the thing is, the thing about hacking today is that hackers, remember, hackers are no longer having a very high barrier to hack anymore because hackers can easily find tutorials online Hacker can, hackers can easily find uh, tools online. And what's best is that many of these hacking tools, some of the best hacking tools today are free. You can easily download it from the internet. Right? That's why it makes hacking so scary and so dangerous because anyone who is more ignorant can okay, just go and download the tools, execute the tools, click on the button, next, 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 attack, there it goes. Attack can be launched. Right. It is very different compared to 20 years ago when we were, we were in, the, in the field of doing security hacking. So this story happened back in 2021 May. This was a real story. A bank was under attack. One of the largest banks here was under attack. And another thing is that you probably have not read any news about cyber attack in the country in Malaysia. When an organization get attacked, the organization has no obligations to report to the authority. The organization has no obligation to report to the news media, obviously. Right? So because in Malaysia we do not have a law that mandates disclosure, right? it meaning that anyone, if you got hacked, you don't have to tell anybody. Right? Because the moment you disclose about yourself being hacked, the kind of financial impact or the kind of impact that you're going to face are far more greater than the, the impact coming from the hacking itself. But because your reputation, your, your customer's confidence in you, you all will be damaged. So that's why many organizations, when they suffer cyber attack, 
they will not go to the public, they will not go to the uh, public media. That's why we seldom hear about the public me media talk about cybersecurity attack. But it doesn't mean that we are secure. The fact is that in Malaysia, we are constantly under attack. If anyone's still wondering about cyber warfare, we are already in a cyber warfare. Right? Anyone here using broadband at home? I suppose everyone does, right? Broadband? Yes? Do you have a firewall in front of your broadband? Does your broadband is do you install a firewall at home? No? Probably if you're so kiasu like me, right? I install firewall in, in front of my broadband and I'm subscribing to uh, uh, 800 Mbps line. And I day at a daily basis I receive 20 attacks per minute. 20 attacks and I'm nobody. Just someone using the internet having a broadband line at home. Right? I receive 20 attacks per minute. Every day. The day that I didn't see any alerts pop up from my log server, that is the day I start wondering whether my home internet has went down or not. Right? So this is exactly what is happening right now. Cyber warfare are real. Hackers are using automated tools to perform their attacks 24 by 7. Hackers no longer sit in front of the computers, typing on the keyboards and then trying to hack targets one by one. Hackers develop software, and software has evolved into the into the the, uh, the phase that where the software can automate the entire hacking process until to the moment the software needs a human to take over, the hack software will not find hackers, the hackers will then take over from the software. So that's in the the world of cybersecurity is not always how we thought it is. Just like today, hackers are not necessarily young, handsome, and slim. Right? <laughs> hackers are not necessarily fully intelligent. Hackers can be middle aged and uh, with, a, with a tummy and over age, uh, <laughs> middle aged and over age. Um, cyber attacks may not be as what we imagine in the movies, but many organizations who suffer cyber attacks they will not go to the public. That's why we, we always live in a false impression that we are secure. In fact, we are not. Right. So from a consumer's perspective, from an individual perspective, what kind of cyber attacks we always see? I'm sure that everyone here has received some kind of email that tells you, you know, you probably need, you could probably help someone to inherit some kind of inheritance, you can get rich, or maybe you receive calls from, just now I was uh, with one of the speakers told, telling me that he will receive calls from LHDN telling them that you know, he has uh, something to do. So frauds, online frauds, scams, these are things that are, are, are constantly growing and we do not, we do not expect frauds and scams are going any lesser. This is the time, we are living in a very interesting time by the way, ladies and gentlemen. We are living in a very, very, very interesting time in the human history. Things are moving at lightning speed. And, and this is also the scary part because when technologies evolve, the cyber risks also evolve together. But that's why today we see a lot of online scams, fraud, um, various types of scams. So for organizations, for business organizations, we are facing even greater risk, right? Because hackers, do not care anymore who are the targets. Hackers are using automated tools, using automated scripts to attack businesses. Right? Hackers do not deface websites anymore. We used to hear that, oh, uh, there's some famous website got defaced uh, by the hackers. Hackers change the website and then put a message there. Now, I would like everyone here just to imagine this. If you have a website, right, and hackers manage to hack the website and change the content of the web website, what should you do? Any idea? What, what would be the first thing you should do? When you have a website and the hackers manage to hack the website and take away the website, what is the first thing you should do? Can I call you? Uh, call me. <laughs> you don't have to call me. The first thing you should do is you need to pray. Thank you so much for hacking the website so that I get to know. You should pray. You should thank, thank you hackers for hacking me so that I am aware that my website was hacked. Because if you look back to the example I just, I just gave you, right, a bank were hacked for more than three years and they have no idea about it. This was the scary, and this is going to be the trend. 
Because hackers today, they're no longer interested in de in de defacing the bank's website. No interest whatsoever. All the hackers are after today is a dollar sign. Right? So if you have a network, you have a data center, you have a business, and you got hacked, and hackers, hackers change the website, you should say, thank you so much, thank you so much. This is the first thing you should do. Right? Thank the hacker, and then move on to do your recovery. Right? So hackers are well organized today. Hackers are no longer working alone. We have come across many cybercrime cases, and we found out that hackers, they're not only working together, they're also even much more well organized than the typical corporate, corporate employees. Right? Hackers from various countries working together with one same goal, which is to extort money from the victim. Hackers are well organized. Professional hackers have good training patience. I would like to, like to add that professional malicious hackers, we are the good guys by the way, we are the ethical hackers. I would say professional malicious hackers have good patience. Anyone could be a target. As long as you have an email address, you have, a, you have an IP address, you can be a target, right? So we need to think proactive and act with common sense. So what shall we do as an individual, right? So get updated on cybersecurity related news. And if I may add, whatever we read on the news media, um, for example, we will always, uh, we usually see uh, the news media will publish that how many attacks were detected within a year. Uh, when we maybe even read it from some reports, uh, research reports to show that um, China has launched X number of attacks and was detected by the US. Now, I would like everyone here to pause next time and look at these numbers. These numbers are reported numbers meaning that the work team probably report to someone and then someone collect the numbers and then put it into a research report. But in actual, in the real world, organizations do not report to anyone. That's why next time when we see this kind of report, we have, we have to have some kind of resolution. Right? The real numbers could be far more scarier than what has been reported. So for individual, uh, these are some of the best advice I would like to give to everyone uh, before I end my talk. So always set a strong password. Use two-factor authentication. Now if you have social media accounts, Instagram, Facebook, Gmail, you name it. If you still have not turned on your two-factor authentication, congratulations, you are the prime target for hackers. Right? So please make sure you turn on your two-factor authentication. Do not use pirated software. This is also one of the main reasons why people get infected with ransomware. Why people, why sometimes your, your, your phone never receive a tag when, when the hackers are using your phone to do illegal transactions. Keep your phone and mobile, mobile phones and computers updated, right? And teach and share knowledge with others. Right? So I hope that whatever we share with you, share with others. Do not believe what we see. Do not always believe, I should add the word always, do not always believe what we see from the news media. Because actually in the real world, many cyber attacks cases never get reported. Many hackers who were caught will never get prosecuted. It's also another topic I would like to explore further one day because our legal systems are not matured enough to have a very strong prosecution, even the hackers were caught. Right, so hopefully there's one day we can share with you on that. So with that, thank you very much. And hopefully you're about